So today, you're gonna be reacting to various things from the day you were born. No sh Okay. No way! I've always wanted to do one because I don't, I, it's just, it's really cool. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, I love this. I haven't ever done this. Oh, I'm so happy to do this. It should be interesting. I mean, you know, the, the actual day I was born, I don't remember much. <laughs> to start, we have the top song from the week you were born to play for you. Dope. Okay, cool. Dude, this makes me so happy. <laughs> I love that this is the song that was popping because like this still is like an anthem. Like if you're at a party and you want people to dance, play the Macarena and you got everybody on the dance floor. I definitely remember this one growing up. My grandma has a, she owned a beauty salon. And I remember I was like, I had to have been like six or something like that. And they were teaching me how to do the Macarena in the salon. <laughs> I love Latin rhythms. That's wow. Hmm. Yep, I am familiar with that song actually. I just love Latin rhythms, so you know. I was a huge fan of Gloria Estefan, Miami Sound Machine when they came on the scene. And yeah, I just, yeah, I mean, it's it's great music to move your body to. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. Cause I'm this is Gangster Paradise, right? I don't, I don't know who this is by. I'm surprised it was rap. Like, I thought it would have been like um, a pop song of some sort. I guess I didn't know how big of a song this was. Maybe back in the day. Maybe you would have expected like some Tupac or something. The boss said she is <gasps> I love Peggy Lee! Down. My pocket needs some money so I can go in the town. My, My dad went to high school with her. He was in the same grade as her brother, and then she was like a couple years behind. Well, that's a good one. That's a good one. That sort of sums up my life, manana. Manana is good enough for me. That's a cool song, because she's so cool. Up next, we actually have a trailer to show you of the biggest movie release the week you were born. Oh my gosh, movie release the week I was born. I feel like it's a Disney movie. Well, I know film noir was real big back then, but I don't know if that was the, the biggest film of the year was film noir. Not as a stranger, one of the greatest pictures of all time. I like the way they put that. <laughs> Some of the most memorable love scenes ever filmed. Yeah, there weren't many memorable ones up until that point. <laughs> or you wouldn't call them love scenes in today's world. Produced by Stanley Kramer, directed by Stanley Kramer. Wow. Interesting. It definitely has that whole feel of that, that time period. Trust. Universal. Is a very important commodity in business. It's the call my trustest guy with my life. That's Adam Ooh. Sandler. They were partners. Uh oh, we got company. Smooth and easy. Oh my gosh, she was so little. You have the right to remain silent. Hey, can you do this? You to have the right to remain Yeet. Oh, this looks. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah! <laughs> Bulletproof. I've never even heard of this movie, I think. That's interesting. Apollo 13 flight controllers. Ooh, go, no, Apollo no, 13. No, uh, Houston, we have a problem. We got a this is a classic. This is a great movie. We don't have that much time. I, I think I've, I also think I've only seen it once and it was in school, but uh, I remember really liking it. I dig the movie more than, more than the song, but uh, pretty, pretty solid two choices. You're not going now. It's my birthday, you promised. I promised? I promised what? You know, Marcus, he promised last year... Their husband and wife in real life. Oh, Florence Marcus Eldridge and Frederick March were married for years and years. He was one of the great actors of all time and worked right up until he couldn't work anymore. I have no idea what that's called. I've never seen it. It's called Another Part of the Forest. Oh, that was a big play first on Broadway, and then they made it into a film. Okay. So next up, we're going to have you guess the prices for certain mm. items on the day you're born. Okay, cool. Okay, the price is right. So first up is gas prices. The current cost of gas in the US averages $2.49. <laughs> I'm sorry, I live in LA, what? How expensive do you think it was the day you were born? I'm gonna guess 
14 cents a gallon? 37 cents. I think it was that cheap back then. Even when I started driving, you could get gas for 25 or 35 cents a gallon when I was a kid. Eight cents, just for the hell of it. The average when I was born, I'm gonna say was a a dollar and 19 cents. So when you were born, the actual price of gas was? Oh, wow. More than I thought, wow. Because it stayed pretty stable, you know, because I do remember seeing like 29 cents and 35 cents on the signs. I'd be doing a lot more weekend trips if it was 29 cents a gallon. Oh, I was way off. Uh, wishful thinking, I guess. 26 cents, and they, they it had to be because they drove those big old cars that got like two miles to the gallon. Oh, $1.23, not bad. I was literally in the middle, not bad. If you found a pump today that has that was at $1.23, you'd never be able to get to it because there were people literally be waiting in line for hours to get to that. So next up is the average price of a movie ticket. Oh. Okay, now that was still cheap when I'd go to the matinees on Saturdays. The current average price in the U.S. is actually nine dollars and three cents. Nine. Okay, I don't go. Oh, I don't go to the movies, but I feel like last time I went to the movies it was like thirteen. How expensive do you think it was when you were born? Twenty-five cents. Five bucks. Four dollars and fifty cents. I'm guessing it was maybe thirty-five, forty cents. It was actually. Uh oh, pretty close. You can't take a girl to a. F dinner and a movie, you're spending a thousand bucks. <laughs> 435 is much more reasonable. I'm I'm getting really close to these. I said 450, 442, eight cents off. It's reasonable, I feel like I see it. You know, like I'm not surprised. Oh, it was 40. Oh, well, that's still a deal. You could sit and watch a movie multiple times. You saw just, usually just one movie, but you could sit there and watch it three times if you wanted to without being pushed out of the theater. So my parents had just dropped me off and I'd stay there all afternoon. 50 cents, okay, not too far off. We did the drive-in a lot as a kid. We lived down the street from a drive-in. The line of cars was down our street just to get in to the drive-in when it opened. It was a whole different, yeah, it was good times. It's just a shame that the drive-ins have gone away. Yeah, it's not as comfortable. You can't sell as much stuff because you got to walk to the snack bar and stuff. But it was kind of fun just to be with your family in your car. So next, we're going to have you guess the median cost of a home in the U.S. The current median in the U.S. is $318,600. It's obscene. That house does not look like it only costs $318,000. That looks like a $2.5 million house here in L.A. In 24 years, I think going up a third is reasonable. So how expensive do you think it was when you were born? When I was born, I feel like that's gonna be cheaper than half. So I'm gonna go with it was really low and I'm gonna say around the 100,000. I'm gonna say 200,000. I know what year they bought the first house. And I remember them saying that they paid $14,000 for it. Who? My parents. He bought the house in 1948. I'm trying to remember what my parents paid. I'm thinking they paid somewhere between eight and twelve thousand dollars. So I'm gonna guess the median was probably around. Let's go ten thousand. All right, let's see. Okay, I was a little off. <laughs> a couple, a couple thousand. Damn. Sam Zaddy, that shit was cheap. That's pretty crazy. That's not a lot of money. Not that I can have. Hundred. $31,000 to spend on a house. Wow, okay, well, making as far as average. So if 14,000 makes sense, cause it's just like 1,400 square feet. It's a little tiny California bungalow kind of house. So $14,000 considering now that, like I say, some of them out there are worth almost a million. 17.5, okay, they cheaped out on me with that first home. <laughs> Alrighty then, well, we weren't exactly living in Beverly Hills. It's just sad, because of the dream, you know, you have to move to a lot of times places you don't want to live, in weather conditions you don't want to live in, just to be able to afford a house if you want to raise a family. And, you know, a lot of times that means moving away from family just to be able to afford a home. So finally, we showed you multiple mediums that allow us to look back into our past. What are some of your favorite ways to capture what life was like growing up for you personally? Um. Well, I'm really big into photography 
and videography. I love to take photos and capture the moment. I think it's gonna be crazy for our kids and like future generations to see like exactly how we looked like growing up in like these high definition photos and videos. My mom had like a lot of like homemade videos. My mom was like a vlogger. <laughs> she had a whole bunch of these like little videos and then just like pictures. We, we took a lot of them. So it's, it was really, I feel like having all that just like keeps it safe. We used to ride our bikes eight miles to a friend's house when we we're 12 years old and no one worried. We didn't have helmets on. We were going down main streets. No one worried about your kid getting kidnapped and all that stuff. Not that it wasn't happening, but it wasn't in your face because of media. And now there is so much anxiety because of media and wanting to look a certain way and wanting to be this or wanting to be that. We didn't have that, we didn't care. Our entertainers were on the seven stations we had on television, you know, and we listened to our sports on radio, or I did, you know, and those listen to news on radio. But they're just, yeah, just, it was so much simpler. I had a lovely childhood because all, most all of us that were born in our area of the world back then, we had what we call the last innocent childhood where you didn't have to worry about your kids. Everyone on the block knew everybody. And I like the fact there was less technology in a lot of ways. It was quieter, life moved slower. It, it was very, it was pleasant. It was a very pleasant youth and childhood. But to have those conveniences now, of the, all the technology with the phones and the computers and everything, uh, I never thought I'd say this, but I don't, I would be miserable without them. Hey guys, we're two-year producer at FBE. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Make sure to check out more episodes like this one across all generations. Link down in the description below. Bye guys.